Hello, 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 and welcome to Rainbows Rising, where we ascend together. I'm your host, Rainbow Raja, and today I have Jackie Delamar of Sacred Journeys, and she is going to be talking about the inner child and how to heal your inner child. Welcome, yes. Jackie. Hi, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much. I am so honored to have you on. <laughs> So I really would love to introduce you to the listeners and for them to understand what your, your journey um, to your awakening was like and, and, mm. and how the inner child played into your healing journey. Mm. What a great question. My awakening. Wow, that feels like a whole separate deep cavern to dive into. Um, yeah, my awakening, I think into spirituality in general started when I had my first child. Um, because of course, that's just the portal to spirituality. Most moms have some sort of an awakening when we give birth because such a beautiful, beautiful experience to give birth. And it's just like a doorway into the heavens. Um, so yeah, so I started my journey in, oh, sorry, I started my journey in Christian, fundamental Christian, reading the Bible, and I was excited about it. And then I would uh, chase my husband around at the time with the Bible. <laughs> you know, like, read this, read this. And, you know, so I was super excited. Um, and there's nothing wrong. I, I am so grateful for that spark of like, wow, spirit moved in me. And so fast forward several years, uh, my husband and I became, fast forward several, several years, we became pastors of a church. And then we were in the military together as he was a chaplain. I was worship leader. And then we had a private church in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the Virginia Beach Vineyard at the time, which unfortunately is no longer alive, um, which that really saddens my heart. And that's a whole different story. But, uh, but in the, when we were in our church, that was powerful. The, the prayer and the worship and the laying on of hands and the healing and the words of prophecy. I really feel like that was just such a powerful time. Uh, and it, it is, and it was a powerful time because it really, it awakened me to the spirit. You know, I was really looking back, I was channeling words of knowledge mm -hmm. and words of knowledge of spirit are the same, whether it's in a Christian church or here with me and you, as we're dialoguing together, the spirit of truth, love, and light is the same, you know? And uh, so anyway, fast forward that, again, don't you think? Yeah. The, the community, the community. Yes. Is, um, I, I think Powerful. in order to have a, a supported spiritual foundation, like mm, you can always absolutely. awaken on your own. I awakened on my own. But I saw the most growth when I was working with people, when I had people that I could confide in with, about my experiences, when I was able yes. to ask questions and feel safe asking questions, when I was Absolutely. able to say, I can feel this and see this, and I had this experience with this angel, and, and am I crazy? And to have people who, whether or not they believe the same thing, but are there to receive it. And, oh, absolutely. And to tell you that that your spiritual journey is safe and that it's unique. And mm -hmm. that is how spirit is going to speak through you and to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think that a community is the most important mm -hmm. thing. That's kind of why I started this podcast is to create mm -hmm. that that community in a time when none of us can go out into the community. Right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It is community. And that's where, um, yeah back to just really quickly, I'll go back to because yeah, I'm no longer in the Christian church. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of the community once and I had this during, in the tarot reading is like sometimes communities that are really truly, they believe something very fiercely, which is great. But but then once you don't believe that, then you're not part of the community anymore. And that yeah. hurts your heart, you know, really. Uh, so anyway, so and yeah, my awakening. Out. It, it's you're an outcast. Yeah. And there's many different people that I know that are, have left the church or some sort of 
belief system and they have truly been outcasts and it's, it's just hurtful. Um, Cause I believe that God is love. There's one universal love and light and that loves all of us. We're all sparks of the divine, you know? And so systems are all just little puzzle pieces to the greater truth. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I agree. So basically that was how I was awakened, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I just, yeah. And then I think actually to be in a deeper set of setting of awakening is when I um, started studying mind, body medicine and then alternative healing modalities. That's when I learned about hypnotherapy, which led into a huge spiritual awakening of past lives and healing different parts and aspects of you that yeah, it's just, there's so many, and then energy healing, energy medicine, there's so many healing modalities. It's just there beautiful. Are. There are. Yeah, there it's are. quite lovely. And it keeps growing. It keeps mm -hmm. growing as, as people remember their past lives and, and as people learn modalities and they say, this modality doesn't resonate fully with me. I'm going to mm -hmm. tweak it and to have oh, yeah. the courage to tweak it. Cause I've tweaked a couple of things I've learned and I made it fit for me and people, mm -hmm. people like are creating entire modalities from just that being able to tweak things. It's, it's so absolutely. It's I, I, I just think that's beautiful. And it's also the way spirit works through us because mm -hmm. you may have learned something, but then what you're adding in makes it maybe not more powerful, but just different. So you can impact someone who has different needs. You know what I mean? Because that's why there's so many of us and so many healing modalities because everybody, every body, energy, physical, emotional body might need a little something different. There's nothing wrong. You know, it's just a different something that they need. And, and that, and we learn yeah. modalities based mm -hmm. on our own wounds. We yes. usually only absorb the mm. information from modalities. Mm. We only resonate with things that work for us. And they Absolutely. work for us because they are healing certain things that we already have dealt with. So every healer, we all are experiencing a lot more wounds mm -hmm. and trauma and, and mm -hmm. um, blockages than, you know, normal people are just going about their normal day to day and not having to worry about the energetics of things. And so when we are learning modalities, we're able to adapt to them to ourselves. Mm. And I think that's why everything is so different and why everything's expanding is because we all have these different experiences. And mm -hmm. depending on what happened in your life, mm -hmm. those are the modalities that are going to resonate for you. Those are the modalities mm -hmm. that are going to work. And Absolutely. I guess that brings us into the, the inner child work. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It is. It's a, a beautiful. Oh, absolutely. It's a beautiful modality. And like you were saying, most healers have a, a difficult, tumultuous past mm -hmm. because as healers, we have to have, uh, I mean, this is my opinion, you have to understand pain and suffering. And that brings us to a place of compassion yes. and em empathy. Somebody that's never experienced pain cannot give you the empathy or the compassion that's necessary to meet you in that deep wound. If they've never been there, if they've never walked in that deep yeah. suffering, yeah. there's a disconnect. There's just a disconnect. So we can speaking on, not only about the healing modality, but the person themselves, mm -hmm. um, so you would be able to minister. I say minister to, to minister, to hold space for someone that matches your wounding path that where you've grown and overcome and been healed through your life. Mm -hmm. And then there's probably going to be a different client or a different person than who might be drawn to me because of what I've been going through. You know, so we all have stories that are different to draw the different types of people towards us. And that's, that's the beauty of the healing journey, you know, it, it's just powerful because we're spirit beings in the human body and, and we're taking on our own journey that we chose and not only ours, sometimes we come in to heal the karmic collective of our ancestors. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which we mean? just talked about <laughs> last month. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. The mother wound, right? Yeah. Well, we, we talked about the mother wound mm -hmm. um, and that was in May. And then in June, we talk about actually the ancestral healing. <gasps> oh, yummy. Yep. But that is, yep. that can be, it's not for the faint of heart, you no, know, no. to walk that path. Oh, that one's hard. It's hard yeah. because you have to, mm -hmm. I know on my ancestral journey, I've only tipped my toe in. Uh, I yeah. just started doing the work probably two years ago. And the hard thing is, is I, when I am taken into a journey to do that work, I am actually shown mm. my ancestors past and I almost have to live it in their shoes. And when I do the work mm. for my clients, it's that I have to be beside their ancestors and experience what their ancestors went through. Sometimes it's like really mm. deeply personal. And you're, mm -hmm. you're getting into deep, dark family secrets that nobody wants dredged up. And it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable because you're like, it's mm -hmm. icky, 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 gooey, irk, irk, mm -hmm. ugh. But mm -hmm. then you come out of it knowing that you had guided, you had given that ancestor, um, mm -hmm. I, I break it into time timelines for them. Mm -hmm. I go, you can walk this path again, or you can choose this other path. And this is what mm -hmm. it looks like. And I give them the choice and they, every time, <laughs> walk the new path. And it, like a domino, it goes, do, 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 mm. and, it, and it even gets to their children, the, my client's children. or Oh, or absolutely. Their, their uncles and aunts and their cousins. And it's just yes. really neat um, to, to feel the energy shift because it really mm -hmm. is just like, whew. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It sounds to me like it it's collapsing that old timeline. It collapses on itself. It's gone. Mm -hmm. It's like washed away by grace, you know, and, and then there's on a different trajectory. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's, it's hard work. It's very, yes. for me, it's energetically exhausting because it's holding the space. Yes. Um, for like, uh, so, so some people are very visual. Some people are very, they do all mm -hmm. their work audibly or vocally mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. with their physical body. Um, mm -hmm. I have a little mixture of all of that. Plus this weird, like I travel mm. with my, my mm -hmm. spirit thing. <laughs> uh -huh. I get it. Yeah, I'm just there like talking about it. I'm, yes. in, I'm in that moment. You're inside of it. I, I get it. it. And I do that too. Yes. You have yes. to create this container, mm -hmm. this, this space outside of space time. Yeah. Uh, you have to manifest it and then you mm. have to secure it. And you have to make sure that your client is there with you and they haven't wandered off somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing when I start a journey. I'm like, That's funny. Where'd, you where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh gosh, but that's good stuff. You know what I mean? That's just powerful work that you do, that we do. Because yes, I I do that as well. I'm sure and it is in there where you're like, where, oh, where they go? yes. Wait. Oh, there you are. Come back over. here. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting because I I do what in the same. Well, I don't know if it's the same way, but I go into their energy field mm -hmm. and I kind of scrub it and see what they're carrying, and the ancestors are there, and I just call it out what they're holding in their energy and mm -hmm. it's interesting and I do love that I do love that but it 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 has it taxes you to totally it's it's an interesting feeling and that's where I just love and adore the inner child work it's just it's different that's because it's oh it's just so, so yummy sometimes it's intense though I mean it depends on what that little one had to go through so sometimes I find um some really hurt little children. I mean, cause they had to endure some stuff that was inappropriate. And mm -hmm. so we go in there and we do repair work and um, yeah, we go in and we, whoever, well, let me, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me introduce how I do the inner child work. Yeah. I was just about to say, it sounds like yes, a sorry. little bit of soul retrieval with <laughs> all of it. Yes. Yeah. All the okay. above. Yes. Yes. And yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I, when I started doing my, um, my work, I would go in like, like, okay, subconscious, tell me what's going on, you know, and then all just about like 99% of the time, it would be a flashback of a memory of a very young person. I'm like, so that 
always seemed to happen and we would go in and we would pull that part out, that little one out and talk to it, soothe it and ask what happened. And then we utilizing hypnotherapy. Yes. Yes. Or trance. It's like a hybrid now. I don't even call it hypnotherapy because it's something it's energy work with trance. Yeah. Oh yes. And I talk to them and they're talking to me. They're not in deep trance where they don't remember anything. No, they're, they're talking to me like you and I are only they're very relaxed. They're aware of it, but they're in like a dream state. So, okay. but they still know what's going on because yeah, they're giving me the information that the, because the little, whatever is going on inside of them is mm. telling me what's going on. Mm. And then I, I just deal with whoever shows up <laughs> only sometimes have I had somebody show up that I'm like, Oh, who are you? Okay. I think we got to deal with this first <laughs> because it wasn't an inner child. And that's a whole different story, but, um, yeah, that's, but the, that's intrusions and yeah, that's walking and attachments and attachments, no attachments well, to the inner child because, Oh, one kind of clump intrusions and attachments oh, into the same category. Oh, I don't know if you're got it. with intrusion, uh, uh walk-ins. Okay, but- that yeah intrude i think i might be saying the word r- wrong i had a long day but That's um okay. so like yeah i it's pretty much somebody else's or another entity's energy in mm-hmm. your energy field attachment yes is a little bit different because it's more of a cord attached to another mm. person and okay yes i see that as an actual foreign energy mm-hmm. taking residence with mm-hmm. your energy field, whether that be in the body, in mm-hmm. the subconscious, or in mm-hmm. your auric energy, manipulating uh, mm-hmm. train of thought, manipulating mm-hmm. your actions mm-hmm. or your emotions, because they have control over all of those aspects of being, should you allow it. I say right. that very skillfully because you have the power. That's absolutely right. But sometimes, we don't realize that we have that it's an entity or a demon. That's what I call them. Entities are anybody without a body pretty much, or even, you know, with a body, we're all entities of some sort, either there. And that's a different conversation. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but yes. Um, let's I don't, go- I don't flavor any being. Yes. I, because yeah. as a shaman, I know that if like, let's just theoretically say they are a demon demons oh, well. are just troubled. They are troubled. Yeah. 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 Yeah beings just like us and they're just they're bored and they're trapped and they don't know what to do <laughs> they're and malicious i go oh you're stuck and i just send them back to source and, and right yeah. that's what i do i send them back to where they came yeah definitely oh, and then if they <laughs> i mean oh yeah love and light and and sometimes i ask archangel michael to take them and escort them depends on that, all of that yeah it totally depends on whether they're willing to go or not yes I, i've called in uh Azrael, i've called in archangel michael <laughs> i've had a team i've been like okay guys oh absolutely we got it. i i'm i'm running short on this client's time we gotta get this going right oh well you know what let me even just back up because i always preface i just want to preface how i do my work is i always call in spirit guides and Archangel Michael, Archangel Uriel, Ariel, Raphael, sometimes Melchizedek. I'll actually listen. Sometimes Mother Mary wants to come through. Depends on who is there to support the client. And um, I have people that come to support me, but every client has a slightly different mix of angelic beings support their spirit team. So I'm always guarding and cleansing and purifying the space, my space, their space, because it's always done through the phone. Mm. And then, yes. And then we just make sure the perimeter is cleansed and purified before we get to work. And then we go to work and I'll do a preliminary cleanse of their auric field, their energy body. That way we know that's scrubbed down kind of energy scrubs. And then I go in and I just say, okay, what's going on? Tell me, tell me. And then they start telling me what needs attention. And then it's generally an inner child. And that's when it's just the magic. I get to help them come forward and see what happened. What did they need? Uh, Oftentimes they were not able to speak what they wanted to speak. 
they didn't have a choice in something like boundaries came up earlier in our conversation pre-recording like yeah they were maybe violated in a boundary sense and it doesn't have to be like this big drama even it doesn't have to be ugly but any violation broken of being is even broken yeah. promises being force-fed food mm -hmm. when they didn't want it uh it could be it could be from seemingly benign to quite horrendous and anything in between and that so depending on what the child needs we go in there and we make peace with what happened we give that little one the chance to say no don't touch me or whatever they need to say don't feed me give them don't feed me you know or and then i just let them air out everything that's stuck mm -hmm. in the body because it's stuck in our physical body our heart body and our energy body and it just festers and festers and festers and then they'll be raging at their boss or, or they won't be able to speak their truth at their boss but they're raging inside because they could never speak their truth in school or with their parent or whatever how whatever is going on with that little one it comes out as adults i resonate so deeply that i mm -hmm. so you know, a little, a little shadow side of me, which I'm, you know, having to, I'm going to courageously come out and talk about. Um, okay, so a little bit about my past is like, I've had a really difficult relationship with my parents. I'm an only child. My parents, hmm. interesting dynamic um, and hmm. interaction. Um, and just like, I was an extremely angry child that like, hmm. so much so that it manifested as bipolar um mm -hmm. i'm just saying if you actually have bipolar please continue to take your medications i'm saying that it that because i now know i do not have bipolar um mm -hmm. but i was in a very toxic environment and mm -hmm. like just listening to you like i'm getting memories i am oh really, okay i'm like just Got it. listening to you i'm like oh my gosh i can feel all of the little emily's like mm -hmm. all the way back, like just, mm -hmm. ah, we want help. I'm like, oh, I've been okay. doing inner child work, but there's just so many times. And mm -hmm. so if anybody out there has like mm -hmm. unresolved anger, if you like don't know why you get angry at seemingly nothing, well, mm -hmm. here you go. It's probably inner child work. Mm -hmm. Like as she was talking, that's what I was seeing is anyone that just you know, gets angry at the turn of, you know, at the drop of a hat or, mm -hmm. you know, gets triggered really easily. I think that these are all inner child wounds that are, mm -hmm. that are coming up for attention. Oh, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be a uber small child. It could be somewhere even like in middle school or mm -hmm. earlier young adulthood. I mean, these are like different aspects that are frozen in time. And it's not like the split personality and it's not like that. It's just a splinter part that's frozen in time. That's holding that energetic residue of feeling abandoned, rejected, not listened to, uh, dismissed or trampled upon. So this could be like, you know, it's coming through for whatever reason is like something about a young, a young woman being mistreated by her boyfriend, but she, this is coming through right now. So I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. So okay. if anybody's listening right now and you're feeling like you're feeling like somehow disrespected, continuously disrespected by the masculine, it might stem from a time when you were a young woman, maybe 16, 17, and you felt like you had to please this person to be liked. And so you put up with or did things that you really didn't want to do. But instead of saying, no, I don't want to do that or no, stop talking to me like that. You put up with it anyway, because you wanted to be liked or something like that is coming through right now. So anybody that's listening to that, love that little girl in you, that young woman. Yes. Okay. I see that you, I see that you, and I see that you place your hand on your heart and like, I love you. And I'm so sorry that you felt like you had to do that. But now what would you say to that person? What would you say to them now? If you, um, well, I'm just going to be honest. It is not appropriate for our family friendly show. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> You can say bleep, so bleep, bleep. Very strong words to the multiple people um, yes. from from the age of 14 
Yeah. All the way up to probably 22-ish. <sighs> okay. Boys, I'm just going to project them into space. Put them in a bowl. Yeah, I'm just and just throw them up into the bowl. Yes, oh, release horrible, it. Horrible, disgusting things I want to say to these people. Yes, and yes, and yes. Yes. And go ahead and get rid of that and cleanse and purify yourself of any residual shame, guilt, self-loathing, because you were not able to say what you wanted to say. Go back to when you came now with love and light. We love you. 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 I'm so sorry that you felt like you couldn't speak your truth. I'm so sorry. And if that was passed on from any or maternal line or paternal line, any and all generations of that where women had to be silent, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. You do what you're told. Uncreate and destroy that right now. And return to sender, never to return again and be filled with divine love and light and powerful, beautiful, divine feminine who is to be honored and respected even now. Take a golden breath of light. And receive that. May that trickle throughout all eternity into your bloodline, to your daughter, and beyond. And so it is. If I had a bucket, it would have literally been a physical. Mm -hmm. I don't have a bucket. That's okay. <laughs> How do you feel now? Did you feel a shift? Oh, I did. It was very, yeah. and it really, so the energy was very gunky, very mm -hmm. heavy. I almost saw it like, like a sludge. If anybody's mm -hmm. familiar with Pokemon, it's like a mm. grimer or a muck, like consistency mm. and just, just gunking out. Mm. Um, but then my heart was lighter mm. and almost like like an empty room where mm. it was just a heavy stone oh blessings thank you yeah and I continue to receive all that i'm probably I'm, I'm definitely going to be calling you for more of that because that i mean i i know mm. i have wounds i'm just gonna be honest with everyone i'm walking this journey with we, you guys we're all walking it together we're we all, all are together that's right that's because we're ascending together. We're just go back to that tagline, ascending. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And continue to call into the divine feminine to fill that room with love and light. Yes. So that's basically how I do inner child work. And, and again, it doesn't have to be baby, baby. It could be a young woman that struggled with whatever. And it's not only females that I work with. There's males that are coming forward with deep wounding as well. It's just not that many right now. They need encouragement to be well, you know? It's because there's a, a really, I'm sure I'm eventually going to cover this, but the the wound for mas the masculine people, the people, mm -hmm. the men, men mm -hmm. have a very, very huge, like a, like a, crevice of a wound because they're mm. they're discouraged from being weak and mm -hmm. any sign of emotion or any sign of them actually being accountable now this doesn't resonate with you don't worry about it right but yeah. a lot of men feel like they can't take responsibility for their mistakes because if they do that that means they're admitting they're wrong that means they're admitting mm -hmm. they're weak that means they're admitting that they're bad people. And it's not about being a bad person. It's well, they about, lose face. Yeah. It's about losing face lose, or something. Yeah. They don't want to lose Do you know? how, how other people are seeing them as a yeah. like, power figure. But the sad thing is, is if they were just to say, oh, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm going to work on that. It That'd be amazing. So light. Like yep. you, you become so light and it mm. is so much easier to carry on you won't carry the baggage you mm -hmm. can really do the healing work and it is that easy to say i am sorry i mm -hmm. made a mistake i'm gonna work on it and mm -hmm. that's all it takes please forgive me i'm mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. that's right i <laughs> you love, know, I love you. you yes i know it 
Yep. It's so true. And they are coming forward more and more. Just it's slower because it it they have enormous amount of armor on mm -hmm. because it's the very very young fragile boy and it's that was taught at a level the, yes it, oh it, it's like yes. such a layered thing because it's it's mm -hmm. it's on a global level very mm -hmm. very global. then mm -hmm. above that is the societal framework depending on your culture mm -hmm. and that oh yeah culture and society are kind of hand in hand depending on your what country That's... you're in and all that and then mm -hmm. even above that is your own family's perspective on mm -hmm. what masculinity is and mm -hmm. then above that, it's your actual parents' perspective on what mm. masculinity is. And then it's mm. your perspective of your mm. role of what masculinity should be. And mm -hmm. it's all meshed together. And you have mm -hmm. to break those barriers. And it starts with ho a put a put you guys. Oh, absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. And then it also to co to go with that mm -hmm. the more healing the the women or the feminine gets receives then the softer we can become again mm -hmm. because we've been trained to be masculine because well the last my generation anyway i was feeling i was not adequate because i was in a woman's body i had to compete with men all the time i was a disappointment to my father so i was told because i was a female not a male so from day one i was set up to be very masculine in nature and so it's like there's many women that have that that structure that is coming down and so the more feminine we can be truly feminine not this lay over and play dead feminine, but you know what I mean? Like roll over, the, just the empowered feminine yeah. that can bring the male in the masculine back into balance. It's just, it's coming. It's working. It it's working. It yeah. I, I know I, I was raised a tomboy mm -hmm. and I mean, not my parents didn't make me, I really wanted to be a tomboy. Like, mm. and, and like true, like I hated skirts. I hated pink my bedroom was blue i liked blue i liked mm -hmm. crawling around in the dirt i was a softball player when i saw boys i want to beat them up and not <laughs> like in a cute way like an i want to beat your butt kind wow. of wow um i don't Interesting. know why. <laughs> i seriously don't i i i chased away a lot of people i actually had crushes on yeah that. but later <laughs> in my teen years i actually became more feminine and like softer and i like started dressing kind of nice but i got such negative response mm. from men i got like you know like anytime i tried to like wear makeup or like i got teased i got bullied and guys mm. were really mean like really cruel to me and mm. i had no idea why so i had to become a really masculine woman Mm -hmm. to not get hit on in really bad ways, like mm -hmm. not good attention, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. I mm -hmm. had to be masculine because if mm -hmm. you look that way, they're just going to assume you go the other, you're, you're on the other team, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? And and that saved my butt in a lot of situations. Wow. But it's it's real sad wow. because I think I'm not the only one. I you're not the only one. A lot of women feel they have to be masculine in order to compete in a career base. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be successful in business, you have to take on this authoritative masculine role. You have to approach people like, hi, I'm very logical and I can take you on. And mm -hmm. if you don't have this alpha energy, mm -hmm. men don't take you seriously. Um, mm -hmm. And I had to learn that the hard way in, in a workplace, because if I was feminine, um, my manager would do bad things that was not legally allowed and mm. get away with it and it was just written off as yeah and so it's true it's really important that we are coming back to this feminine place mm -hmm. and i know that there's a huge amount of pushback from the, the the alpha like these men who have had control these men who have been able to manipulate the feminine i even had a guest uh, a, a guy want to be a guest on this show who mm. called me and his perspective is that the divine feminine is becoming too powerful to and taking over the masculine and wow. that and that and I, I was like, 
really, I was trying really hard to be like, okay, I'd like to hear your perspective on this. I want to get into a discussion so that I can see if this is something I would have on my show. Mm -hmm. It became very volatile and weird, weird things uh, were oh. said about, about how w women were not being domestically abused by men. It, it was more lesbian wow. domestically abusing each other and how victims of wow abuse were lying and i said no um, yeah good for you no no yeah you go look at your statistics you go do some research because yeah. what you're saying deeply offends me on a personal and on a a societal level and i'm totally. not going to i'm not going to have that in my in my area so no, definitely. I'm protecting but, all my listeners from, I'm very selective, everyone, in case you were wondering, I'm very selective yeah. who I bring on the show. But good on you that you gave him a, a, a listen. You know, you were willing to hear him out. Two so hours. good for you. Two and hours. I, 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 yes, I really wow. wanted to understand him. Wow. I really, okay. really wanted to see, I know this person. I've worked with oh. him and I okay. wanted to give him a good listen. But it was um i think he's been wounded by feminine i think he's yeah. been hurt i think he's been rejected and this is his mm. way of he doesn't know instead of connecting with his own femininity mm. being being wounded and being in that wound and feeling that wound and being mm -hmm. okay with that wound that mm. that can heal him and to say, you know what? Not all women are like this. And I got mm -hmm. hurt. Somebody hurt me. And mm -hmm. to, to allow the feminine nature of mm -hmm. pain to heal. Mm -hmm. him, I think that could have been such a powerful moment for him wow. to, to recognize that he was weak in, in a sense, but there's so much power that comes from the recognition of that weakness. Just mm. like when we recognize the inner child. Right. <laughs> but but yes, I'm sitting here thinking about him. I just wonder, uh, you know, there's if he was brave enough to come forward, mm -hmm. then that means there's more. Yes. Uh, obviously, there's more masculines that have that belief. Yes. Because they've been entrained in that. He, so I'm curious. He's an right. advocate for the divine masculine. He, that oh, okay. Was, that was hit. He he's like I'm an advocate for the divine masculine. We feel blank. Wow. Blank. Oh wow. And mm. because of all the the me too's and stuff, mm -hmm. and that had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And I feel that men are now being held accountable. And at the mm -hmm. time when they were acting on their physiological responses in mm -hmm. their teens or in their young adulthood and like they mm -hmm. never they never got punished mm -hmm. suddenly they are feeling shame and guilt for hurting mm -hmm. another person and they don't want to be accountable for the suffering they have inflicted on another human we all inflict suffering i have inflicted right. suffering mm -hmm. absolutely my, my goodness i feel beyond awful about it Mm -hmm. And I, I've tortured myself about it. I have forgiven myself and I have mm -hmm. asked for forgiveness from the people I've hurt. And I constantly work to be a better person. But mm -hmm. I, in order for me to do that, I had to admit that I, I hurt somebody deeply. Yes, that's it right. Be emotionally, whatever it be, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to say, oh, I'm an SHIT person right now. This is not the best. I did that. Yeah, I mean, taking responsibility for our actions, mm -hmm. even our intentions that are less than honorable, really, our, t our intention is the same as actually doing it, in my opinion, you know, because it's our energy, it's our thoughts that we're sending or directing towards someone if they're evil of an intent, like, like, oh, you, whatever, it's family friendly show, I remember that. So, yeah. but you know what I mean, like, you can curse someone in your mind, and you might as well just say it to them because you, they can feel it. They can yeah. feel that projection, that judgment. And, and, and sometimes you actually are cursing people. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, yeah. you have to be accountable for that ill Oops. will wished upon another. Mm -hmm. but, and and it's going to come back around. <laughs> it will. It always, it always does. Does. It's it's a will. It's a boomerang. Like, 
You know, <laughs> so, you're talking yeah. about him. And, I and wanted, him being yeah. the divine masculine. Mm-hmm. Or claiming to be, whatever. He identifies as the divine masculine. Yeah. I don't identify necessarily as a divine feminine. I am very balanced in that way. Mm. But I can see, I feel that he has an inner child wound with mm-hmm. the maternal side. And that's yes. where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, even talking to him, it was, I, I don't want to use words that might be misconstrued as an insult. Right. I don't mean it that way. But the only word I can possibly comprehend is the way he was phrasing his argument, the way he was phrasing his frame of mind was in a very juvenile. And I'm saying juvenile because it's between childhood. It's like a teenage way of explaining things. He was like, there's statistics, but he could not give me statistics. Mm. And he would gaslight around certain things that he didn't know how to explain. And the way he talked really reminded me of an angsty teenager and Mm. not in a, not in a derogatory or rude way. um, But in like just someone who didn't know what to do with themselves. And Mm -hmm. I feel that probably he has like bringing it all back home, this inner child wound. And that's, that's maybe, and Mm -hmm. of course he was touching on my wounds, which we just healed the ones I was Mm -hmm. talking about. And that was my, I, I have done my own work and I said no. And that was mm-hmm. me reestablishing mm. that boundary. That's right. Because he was, he was like, no, you're going to put me on your show. You owe me. And I'm like, I'm not putting you on mm-hmm. my show. This is, this is my show. And this mm-hmm. is my, well, this, I mean, like, these are my people. I'm not mm-hmm. going to expose my people to this. This is very negative. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. But I can now like feeling into it. Like I mm-hmm. feel so, so deeply for his wound. Mm-hmm. because somebody to mm-hmm. feel that that strongly yes about other people's suffering being fake or being yeah. uh, like all of the accusations he made that were generalized for my entire gender yeah or, uh, what do we call women now I don't I don't know if gender is the right uh, you know, Gender works for me. I mean, right. well, yeah. listeners, if you're yeah. right, I'm so sorry. I think that's I'm okay. No, my best. I mean, to me, no, you're, but I think you're absolutely correct. And I just love how your heart opened up to see his little boy. And that's beautiful. And that's exactly also part of the work that I do is like when we lead people through forgiveness work, mm-hmm. it's very, sometimes it's very hard to forgive people. Then I ask them, okay, can you? allow yourself, whoever I'm talking to, would you be willing to see the perpetrator or the abuser or that just that person who hurt your feelings? Would you be willing to see them as a little child and to see maybe what they are holding in their hearts? And it always brings people to a place of compassion, or at least it lowers their anger level Mm -hmm. tremendously where they're willing to say, oh, wow. Yeah, that, that, yes. I feel for him. Yeah, and I was going to ask if we could pray for him and all the children. Would that be okay? Can we do it even now? Everybody, yeah. Do everybody? Is that okay? Yes, please bring your bowl out. It's time for the bowls. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, right on. Yes. Okay. Do you want to ring us out and and then I'll there. So if everybody that's listening here, this, if you're driving, please don't uh, go in too deep and keep your eyes open. But if you're in a place that's safe, and if you'd like to close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes and maybe place your hand on your heart. Calling in all our angels, our spirit guides, calling in all the beings of love and light, universal love and light, the most beautiful and powerful spirit of compassion, truth, healing. I'm asking that you would come even now and just touch everyone listening now in the future and those that we have intention to send healing to, like this gentleman that Emily spoke to. We're asking for him to be receiving to their point to the amount that he's willing to receive, we're asking for healing for him 
his little boy to soothe that heart that's been wounded and broken. Taking a breath. If you're feeling into your space, I'm wondering if you can access any part of you that's holding pain and sorrow or anger, anger about a situation, a reoccurring theme in your life, a pattern of behavior that you find yourself in, or you keep drawing the same people into your reality, something like that. There's like a toxicity or a feeling like you can't speak your truth or you're afraid to show up in the body you're afraid to show up because you are in a female body you're afraid to be sensitive because you're in a male body all these fears that are deeply rooted and grounded in cultural norms that are not they're just antiquated they're old or their family cycles family dynamics or past wounds of the ancestors you just kind of brought in fears and trauma from our ancestors whatever is calling you right now in this time and space I'm asking for healing I'm asking for love and light I'm asking that if you can pinpoint and touch a little part of you that's holding pain or sorrow would you be willing to speak truth, love, and light, and even hold that part of you? Say, I love you so much. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. But I'm right here with you now. And would it be okay to forgive whatever happened, knowing you're safe, you're safe now in the body, and release that situation to the extent that you can, without re-traumatizing or re-triggering anybody. Angels, please be with everybody. And only bring forward what is appropriate for this time right now. Thank you. I'm asking for healing and grace, 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 and releasing of what is ready to be released now. Send it to the light with Archangel Michael with Archangel Uriel, Ariel, Raphael, please come and bring healing to all the parts that need your gentle, loving touch. Mama Gaia wants to be here to nurture all of us, to love us, to ground us. Mother Mary is here to bring blessings on us to hold us, yes. And I'm asking for the most beautiful, powerful, shimmering golden light wash over all of us. Shimmering sparkles, yes, yes, and yes. Sealing us with angelic life force. And we are safe in the body and we are complete. Thank you. And so it is, and so it is. And so it is. Taking a breath and releasing what's ready to go. Gently coming back in the body. Keeping your hand on your heart if it feels good. Shake your body out if you need to. Ah. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. Mm. Yes. How is that? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I I got I got some res resolution from from a mm -hmm. time when I was like five or six, the time that I've brought up verbally multiple times, I think that's how you know you still have a wound when mm -hmm. you when it's vivid in your mind, when it still comes up in conversations. And I got to I got to see the person as a child, and I I forgave the event. Mm -hmm. And thank you. I got to 
clear out other events with that same person. It was, um, it was a real blessing. So thank you for that. It's my honor. It's my honor. And thank you for releasing that. Yeah. I, I hope all of you guys got to, um, got to enjoy that. And if you had trouble this time around, you know, you can always come back to this recording and listen again. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this will work with multiple, <laughs> multiple different wounds. Um, mm -hmm. I know I will be listening on, on my own to this. I want to just say, if there's something that's really feeling too strong to do this, then reach out, okay? Because there are some things that you need support with. Mm -hmm. Whether it's me or you or somebody, some things are just too deep to work on by yourself. You just need to have someone mm -hmm. to hold space and to guide you through. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, having but, a facilitator is so, so important. Absolutely. Especially if absolutely. you're doing soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. um, in in the olden times <laughs> in the olden times when you would work with a shaman and they would do soul retrievals we we don't have the the means you know the always the the means to do this nowadays but i do my best to hold the space for this ritual but when i do soul retrievals um well when i did them in, in the olden times i would have them bring their family with them mm. to the to the soul retrieval and you would be calling back the soul pieces and you you mm. need you need a group of people holding that space that it is safe that you mm -hmm. they are being welcomed back that they are being invited home um and that isn't that's not we don't have the like i said the means in every single session to do that you can't have your clients bringing their entire families to your office space. And um, so I do that with their soul family. I invite all their guides and all their, mm -hmm. and I invite them all to hold that space. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I encourage you guys to reach out to a healer you trust mm -hmm. to, to whether it be Jackie here, cause obviously she's really gifted with, especially with this mm -hmm. inner child work. Um, and I, I personally, I've done some inner child work, but it's not my specialty. I do transformational work, more ascension work and trauma mm. healing work. Mm. Um, Cause I've had a lot of that. So I've <laughs> experienced in that, right. but um, yeah, this, this was so powerful. And we got to do, yeah. this was a real gift because I was lucky enough to receive multiple little things. And I hope there were people out there who were resonating with her transmissions because I feel like it was meant for more than just me. I think it was meant mm -hmm. for those of you out there um, listening. And I really hope that uh, mm -hmm. you guys were able to follow along and be a part of, be a part of the work. Um, and even if in there, really, this is interesting. The work that I do, oftentimes it goes beyond the mind, mm -hmm. the inner child inside, the inner child is hearing what we're saying. So even so, I'd like to just post session care, if I may. Absolutely. Go if you find your well, first, if you're if you were really partaking in this, take a nice salt bath if you can. Throw some essential oils in there to cleanse your body. Your body's going to be processing the emotions and the energies we're releasing. So you may be tired. It's okay. You might find yourself thinking, having dreams. Journal, take time to journal your thoughts. And maybe you might find yourself wanting to write letters to people. You don't have to send them. Mm -hmm. Just write letters and, and uh, do whatever type of ceremony you would like. Maybe write a letter and burn it if that feels all right. Whatever, everybody has their own way of doing ritual. And no, there's nothing wrong with anything. You, you just do what feels right for you. Follow um, Follow your heart. And then maybe also take a walk, move your body. Like I said before, I said that earlier. So um, yeah, but take a salt bath, take it, take lots of water in, drink lots of water, allow your body to move the energy and be gentle with yourself, really. And then if there's something that's popping up, reach out, reach out to one of us and we can take care of that because it's, it's, it's deep, profound work. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, and I'm grateful and honored to be a part of that. So thank you, Miss Sweet. Thank you. I'm so grateful to have been guided to you. Mm. Because, um, yeah, I, I know. Nuts to the listeners. Let me just give you guys yes. a story here. Um, one day I woke up and I sat at my altar and I lit some incense and I was doing a tarot reading for myself because I like to do that sometimes. And I had a very strong, powerful inner vision of the word sacred journeys. And I was like, huh, wonder what that is. I pulled out my phone, I searched sacred journeys and I found Jackie. <laughs> Amazing. Found Jackie. Um, there were, there were two listings that came up that really stood out and Jackie was one. And there was another lady that I reached out to just to, just to oh, see yeah. what this was about. And I, I feel like it was a divine message because it turns out Jackie lives really close to me too. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's pretty oh. interesting. So, so, yeah. So interesting. I love that when spirit just brings people together, there, there's no accidents. They're, they're all beautiful, divine serendipities. <laughs> they're happy accidents. As happy accidents. Oh, that's right. That's right. Happy accidents. Happy oh, accidents. yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, yes, I believe that when we met, I was in Mexico. And then just like six weeks ago, I came back. And now I'm just down the road from you. So that's cool. That's relatively so, speaking. It's so funny, because yeah, you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Mexico. I was like, Oh, man, she lives far. How did I find <laughs> this list? <laughs> Oh, really yeah so thank guys, you so much it's this is also the, i know we didn't talk about this but this is part of the shadow part of the inner mm. child work is mm. when your body gives you an intuitive surge to do something to go for a walk to go to a park to do something completely mm. different than what you are doing in this moment you get a flash of something and you get a compulsion to do something irregular. That is usually spirit trying to put you somewhere mm, at yes. the right place at the right time. And it is up to your inner child to follow that flight of fancy mm. and to have fun with it and to trust in it. I, I know that's inner child work because when I was a kid, that's my whole world was following that the magic. That would mm, happen. The flight, yes. of fancy, the thoughts, the images you get when you look up at the <sighs> screen, and it's all kinds of weird little faces, and you talk to the faces, and they give you information. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> but follow your intuition. Do the weird things. Talk to the faces in the ceiling. Sing mm. random songs off the top of your head when you're cleaning your yes. house. Stop caring what other people think and be a kid again. Yes, yes, and yes. It'll yes. Make those wrinkles go away. That's right. <laughs> and it's interesting what you said. I'd like to bring that up. The shadow aspect of the inner child. That's very interesting to me. Um, do we have time to go on a little tangent Absolutely. for a second? Okay, cool. Because um, this is something that's been interesting to me because it is our inner child. It's the subconscious, all the sub mm -hmm. subconscious beliefs, aka the inner child or different aspects that are creating our reality, you know, because it's their energy that's sending out people to come towards us or situations to keep repeating. And we can try all day long to do affirmations and to create something new. But if we haven't got our inner child on board, it's going to get derailed with, yep. and we're like, what just happened here? I'm also, trying my if, hardest. If your inner child is telling you to do things. Yes. And you suppress it or you tell it oh, to yeah. shut up. You tell it yeah. you don't have time. You're like quiet inner child. I'm mm. busy doing work. That yeah. inner child, just like a small child saying, come play with me, mommy, mm. is going to stop yeah. to play with you. Yeah. That's it's true. yeah. True. The child's going to go in the corner and play with itself, sadly, mm. depressedly. So remember that those little tiny flights of fancy, mm. those little, the things of wanting to get up and dance spontaneously, even though you're at mm. work, go to your <laughs> car, do it. Yeah. Dance at your yes. job. Who's, I mean, besides your boss, who else is going to care? Go to the bathroom. Who cares? 
But right. it's important to follow that because if you trust it, mm -hmm. usually magic happens. Mm -hmm. If you dance at your job because you got that flight of fancy and you actually trust it and you follow that, that feeling and it's like, mm -hmm. right now I have to dance right at this moment. You turn on your music and your headphones and you you're, you start dancing. Maybe your boss comes over and loves that you're in the groove and your boss is like, mm. you know what? I like that you're 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 so comfortable at work that you, you know what? Come with me to dinner. I'd love to talk to you about that project you turned. Wow. In. You know who knows? That's what great. Happen. You know who? I knows? love that. Yeah. I mean, I've had really bizarre things happen from me doing weird things that me, that that I was so self-conscious about, but it opened a door because somebody else mm. shared in this moment of spiritual joy that I had with mm. myself. And mm -hmm. they were moved by mm -hmm. my by my connection with my own divinity. Yeah. And your spontaneity and your playfulness, your magical beingness. That's cool. That's amazing. Yes, I love that too. Yes, to to honor the little child. Mm -hmm. But yet, but that's, but the other half is we have to bring healing to our little child. So they are on board with our progress, our forward momentum in life, because we're ultimately creating um, a new reality we within are. ourselves, but like our future self, right? Mm -hmm. We're always, if we're stepping forward, we're stepping into the unknown mm -hmm. and that we're creating the future self, but our inner child has to be on board mm -hmm. as that is happening and unfolding. Otherwise we're going to find ourselves doing, reverting back to old coping skills, like coping mechanisms that the little one did, you know, whatever that, whatever the little child inside did to feel safe maybe overeating when they're anxious or uh, I don't know, hiding in their room with stereo on That's me. I'm always in my room with my stereo and I'm because my mom and dad were always fighting. So I'm in my room because that's my safe zone. So, you know what I mean? Whatever the little child needed to do and be to feel safe. If until we heal that part, that's what you'll find yourself doing. And you're like, what, what am I doing? Why am I eating this bag of chips or whatever? Well, it's because you must be nervous and your little one is ad activated. So there's so many reasons to do inner child work, bringing it, I'm bringing it full circle again, because uh, yeah, there's just so many things that are still activated, but if we don't recognize it, we'll just keep doing it until we start questioning like, oh, why am I doing this? Why, why do I keep attracting the same person in my life or whatever that pattern is? Yep. So anyway, so, yeah, I think sucking your thumb randomly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it could yeah. happen. I mean, the, I mean, yeah. I'm just going to be honest, you guys, there was a time like before my daughter was born um, where I was being triggered by some event and I, I would have these really explosive crying fits and mm. I would literally like break down and I would find myself reverting to exactly that. I'm just not going to, mm. you know what I mean? But, and it was very short, but, but I needed that. I would crawl on my closet and that's what I would, I would be in that space. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think it was in my late teens, early twenties. And it was when my awakening started and I was breaking away from my parents. And I think it was this triggering that was happening with the power struggle between them. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the shadow aspect of the inner child work, um, there is a shadow aspect because when your inner child is throwing a tantrum, like you really have to see your inner child as a child. And if you mm -hmm. don't have experience with your own, like with having your own children, or if you've never babysat and you just can't stand kids, go to a park mm -hmm. sit and observe children. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you don't have to do much more and you don't need a lot of time. 20 minutes will be enough. Just watch how they interact. Um, because if you can, I, if you can see that you can start to have a dialogue with that inner child within you. And the dialogue can be something as simple as when you notice yourself being triggered, you notice mm -hmm. yourself um, having a flip out, you can say, okay, what is causing this? Is mm -hmm. this inner child? Is this mother wound? Is, is this something, you know, is this uh, a trauma work? And usually mm. something will, the answer will come. If mm. you are listening, mm -hmm. if you can 
really close your eyes and bring yourself to your heart and breathe and give yourself the space to answer. The answer mm -hmm. will come. It'll be mm -hmm. like, this is like, this is me, little baby. Mm -hmm. and, and then say, what's going on? Why are you throwing a tantrum? How can That's I? That's right. Because what? Yeah. they're throwing a tantrum because they have been ignored. They mm -hmm. are throwing a tantrum, uh, a tantrum because they've been abandoned. They are throwing a tantrum because they have been wounded. Mm -hmm. And whatever is happening in your external world is mirroring back to this inner child that is in that perpetual cycle in that time splinter, as you called it, right? A time splinter, mm. wrinkle in time, in mm. that time splinter in your body. And they are resonating a uh, vibrational. Yeah. It is a vibrational yeah. match with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we get triggered, Sipping. we get memories. It is mm -hmm. because that those little splinters, whether it be a mother wound, wh whether it be ego, whether it be, and I'm, I'm saying all these, cause these are all things we've covered you guys. Sure. In my older things, we got ego, we got mother wound, we have ancestral. Mm -hmm. Now we have inner mm -hmm. child yeah. and ask yourself, what is this and what do you need how can i help you, you? how can i help you mm -hmm. and listen mm -hmm. and never shush what mm. comes up listen to the first thing and don't ask are you sure yes you are sure you need to trust yourself first and foremost mm -hmm. always trust yourself always trust yourself always mm -hmm. always always if you can't trust yourself mm -hmm. how can you trust another person you are living your life for mm -hmm. you if you doubt yourself, how can anybody trust you? How can you trust anybody? How do you even know if your reality is real? <laughs> Mind blown. Yeah, right. but, and, and I really am a huge advocate of placing your hand on your chest. It helps you stay in the body. Because a lot of times if you've been, if you've experienced trauma, big or small or whatever, we tend to check out of the body. So just placing your hand on your heart brings you back in. It's okay. I'm right here with you. I'm here. How can I help you? What's going on? And baby that child, baby yourself, give yourself the love and the nurturing that you didn't receive. And, and we're not blaming anybody. Okay. If we didn't get what we needed, it might not have actually been on purpose. It was maybe I don't know, maybe our parents had issues too. I mean, maybe that's possible. And they didn't have the, the capacity to give us what we needed. And I'm literally being serious because it's so easy to blame and shame our parents for everything. Yeah. But, you know, our parents did the best they could with what they had. Yeah. And if our mom or dad were suffering with depression and we tried to get attention from them, they were not able. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're depressed, it's that's a deep well it is. and so it's hard to engage and i know that doesn't maybe sound like logical but somebody that's severely depressed they may not be able to give that little child the the validation and the mirroring that they require it's the mirroring when we're little that validates us mm -hmm. and so there's so much there's it's just so complicated and there's so many layers of our our development that it's just too easy to blame mom for everything yeah. or blame dad. No, and mom and dad. Lot, I did a lot of that. You guys, I think I've like, brought stuff in the we house, all do, especially for the mother wound. Like yeah. I went through a long phase of real first. It was being in denial about my parents having any mm -hmm. effect on my mental state and who I was. Then it was oh. going, Oh my God, ew, what is all this coming to the realization <laughs> of right. all the trauma I'd actually been in. And then mm. going, they're at fault. Look, look at all this stuff they did to me. Mm. And then yeah. it was coming to this state of forgiveness. Yeah. Of recognizing that even if it was their fault, I'm yeah. an adult and I'm responsible for my emotional reactions mm. as an adult. And it's right. my job to heal my inner child. Because yeah. if they couldn't show up then, they won't show up now. And mm. it is my job to show up for me. Yeah. And, and I do want to say, obviously, if there was, I mean, sometimes there's wounds of uh, what, it, what there's a term I'm looking for. It's like not intentional mm -hmm. injury. It's not intentional on their part. So there That's is a, cool. you know, it's just such a fine, like sometimes people are 
not the best parents. But again, it's because they have their own issues, but I'm not excusing the anything. They don't have the tools. They weren't given. They didn't the have the tools. Yes. And just remember everyone, you mm -hmm. went through the experiences you went through. Yes. For the, for those wounds to know how to heal those wounds in yourself That's and right. others. And even if you're not a light worker, even if you're just a normal person with a normal job, you just enjoy the spiritual aspect of this podcast. Know that mm. if you ever have a conversation with someone about your wounds, you are showing up and healing. Yes. In those moments. Yes. So your experiences, your story is valid and mm -hmm. important. And you, you signed, I mean, like this is my belief system. This is not, I'm not projecting this onto anyone. This is my belief system. I signed up for this. I know mm -hmm. I did. And I take accountability for that. And I say, wow, my childhood and my adolescence was hard, but I mm. wouldn't take a minute of it back. I am grateful for the suffering I endured because I, I came out stronger and I was given the tool set to do what I do. And what I do is magic and I'm not boasting. Right. I am right. genuinely grateful for the capacity to do mm. what I do. And it is Amen. such a blessing. And if I didn't have the deep, deep, chill though the wounds i had as a child the wounds i had as an ad adolescent which is like when i went through my dark night was from the time i was eight until all the time all the way up until my like mid-20s like my dark night was a long really awful experience but i wouldn't i wouldn't do it different i wouldn't mm -hmm. take it back i am grateful for my trauma and mm -hmm. i'm not a victim i'm a co-creator and I co-created a stronger version of myself. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm showing up for a little Emily over, well, that's right. I totally just said my real name. Oh, well, little rainbow over there. Little rainbow. <laughs> showing up that's for right. little rainbow. I'm showing up for little rainbow. Um, so that's yeah, right. I'm just, I'm just being there for her. Mm. Over there in the corner, doing her thing, listening to Backstreet Boys. That That's was a right. Good band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on. Oh my gosh. Because it's greater yeah. than life, you guys. <laughs> oh, and the puns. Okay. <laughs> now what now I've spent too much time in my inner child and <laughs> <laughs> no, never, never. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so how do you have questions or do you have other topics around the inner child that you wanted to touch on tonight mm. about so there... we, we talked about um okay so we talked about your journey which was profound we talked about your process and what modalities mm. really helped you in doing inner child work which mm -hmm. seemed to be hypnotherapy um, mm -hmm. a little bit of ministry uh like spiritual oh yes and, and um uh ordination like being being mm -hmm. a, a minister doing the ministry mm -hmm. healing and mm -hmm. also i feel like you're a really good energy worker like i don't know yes. if you took energy work but i really feel that when you're cultivating sacred space um yes i yes, guess I, I guess my question would be how would someone know um I get like we talked about needing to come to someone else for oh. work. what would be yes. a good sign that a wound is too deep or a mm. wound is too fragile um, to do on your own? How do you know when you have a child, ch an inner child wound that um, needs the tenderness of mm -hmm. a facilitator? Mm. That's a great question. And it could be different for everyone. So this is going to be like, it's kind of vague and I don't want it to sound vague, but you're going to know because if you're doing this process, like what we just did tonight, mm -hmm. and it feels like you're just going to know you're, you're going to feel nervous or there's not going to, you're, if you feel bodily sensations with no memory, then it's pre-verbal, pre when you're little, because the prefrontal cortex comes online 
quite later in life. And so if it's pre-verbal, pre-frontal cortex being online, it's going to be in the body, but you're not going to have the memories or the understanding of what happened. So that was probably going to be something you'll probably want to have somebody walk you through that. Um, or if you're just going to know, you're going to know if there's a part of you that just knows you don't want to revisit something on the surface. You can just tell like, Oh God, I don't, I don't ever want to talk about my childhood. I don't remember much about it. There's so much, but I just don't want to talk about it. And you just have that visceral, like, no, I don't want to go there. I know somebody like that. I'm gonna yeah. Know. So, but, <laughs> but it's very important. I mean, it is very important that you honor, not you, but all of us honor that because everyone is timings different. You know, you, you never want to push someone's healing work because it could really, if they're not ready, if people aren't ready for something, they're not ready. Yeah. And it's like somebody that you want to have a conversation about something, but they don't want to hear it. Well, what happens when you keep pushing that conversation? They're going to shut down and they're going to like remove you from their reality. So it's kind of the same thing in healing work. You, you don't want to, you don't want to cause more, uh, I don't want to say more trauma, but if you're resistant to something, don't dig it. Don't dig it up. Don't dig it up. You don't need to dig anything up because our, this is a little bit deeper down. If there's something very painful, very traumatic that happened, our brain can literally splinter off. So I mentioned aspects and splinter parts, but in the work that we're doing, we're still able to retrieve them. Right. They're there. They're on the Talking surface. They're popping up. Disassociation. Yes. And, and that exactly soul retrieval and shamanic work comes into play. Yes. And that is something completely different than what I'm doing and offering because that is beyond um, it. That requires different skill set. And yeah. And it's just that's, that's more my my line of work. You guys. <laughs> OK. And if that's yeah, I'll I'll leave that to you to say, cause that I'm just dealing with the aspects that are readily available and they're willing to come forward, mm -hmm. but I never, ever, ever dig never because it's just, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest when people come mm -hmm. to me, the, it's going to be one of those sessions. It's either mm -hmm. one of those sessions where you get a bunch of cool new modalities and like awakening mm -hmm. skills, or mm -hmm. it's one of those where it's like, we're about a bunch of, about to punch a hole in your reality. Um, wow. My guides have told me that I do what is called Phoenix activations for people. Oh, cool. Uh, that's so, that's interesting. Yeah, it's huh. pretty, but it's it's messy work. It's messy work. Um, wow. I'm really okay for it, but I get I I will get people who don't know anything about shamanism. They come to me for like massages and and healing <laughs> stuff. And they're like, yeah, just give me a Reiki and a massage. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's not okay. why you're here. <laughs> that's and you're like, like, look at you, like, oh. <laughs> but funny. Um, I do, I do touch in. I can see what's so yeah. like the the psyche knows what it's comfortable with, but I work mm -hmm. on a little little deeper level. Sometimes mm -hmm. the soul needs a push. Mm. more than the psyche like i i don't know how to explain it like mm -hmm. the people are resistant but there's a different agenda that is yeah that is on a different level and that's i'm listening to guides they are at they totally are here for a different like they they were dragged here by someone they're right. not here at my doorstep for a reason kind of thing right and there is a difference is if there is an energetic block that's keeping something hidden. That's different. Oh yeah. Um, in in my line of work, I'm not yeah. I'm not trying to transfer over into what oh. you're doing. But in in my sessions, I can like you're saying, you can tell if there's an energetic block Got or it. a hiding yeah, behind. Right. But mm -hmm. um, and and that's a different. Yeah, it just it depends on every client. But if I'm asking them to bring forward what's bothering them mm -hmm. then it readily comes forward it because the subconscious is ready the whatever's mm -hmm. ready if they're in alignment if they're at my doorstep like you said then they're ready to pop because that part of them drew them to me yeah, um that's that's yeah exactly what you're saying yeah mine's mine's the other one though 
Yeah, no. Yeah. And that's I, fine. I've done meditations to inner child work. And when mm -hmm. I'm especially working in the heart center, like they'll go mm -hmm. on their own journeys or I'll facilitate. Yeah. I don't, I like for anybody who doesn't know how I do my sessions, my guides and your guides guide the session. And I am literally like a megaphone. I just, Yay. I am the, I'm the vessel. Um, I do nothing. I am an mm. observer. I, I am witness to the magic that uh, comes through. Oh, um, yummy. That's so yummy stuff. I get to enjoy the show and you get to experience the show. And then my guides get to laugh at me later. <laughs> like, what just happened? You guys, they're like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So. I, I recommend you guys because I don't know wow. about you, but I had such a great time with Jackie today. Mm. I feel so much lighter. As you guys can tell, I'm in a much good. lighter mood today. Um, we got to talk good, a little good, bit good. before the show, and she just brings this this light, happy energy into the room. Uh, mm. I, I know I healed a, mm. a, a lot um, in this very short amount of time. I'm so so deeply grateful so deeply grateful for you jackie and if you wouldn't mm. mind telling everyone where to find you um so that yes thank you, you out and i'm i'm deeply grateful as well thank you so much this has been just lovely and fun and yeah me so thank you thank you and thank you um so yes i have a website uh, well, of course, Facebook, Jackie De Lamar or Sacred Journeys on Facebook. And I do daily tarot readings just for fun at Island Girl Tarot. So find me and join the little the little group and jump in there and you'll get daily reads. They're, they're a collective read. It's not personal, but it's just fun. We have a little community. And then my website is www.sacredjourneys.xyz. <laughs> mm. I know. I like that. I'm like, oh, okay. That's cool. www.rainbowraja.love. So I, I love those top tier domains. I love that. Rainbowraja.love. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> thank you so much. This is so awesome. It was so great to have you. Thank you all for listening, oh for participating, for showing up for yourselves for being open to wherever our discussions go because mm. sometimes they go a little off track but i feel like they always wrap themselves around that maybe we are speaking of things to resonate with you guys to, mm -hmm. to touch on things that are going on on your side and i just am so grateful you guys visit week after week after week i am so appreciative of your support for the show for creating a community please reach out please leave reviews please let people know that, mm -hmm. that you're there so that everybody yes. knows what to expect listening to the show i want to create a community i want us all to feel connected i am so mm -hmm. so deeply grateful to all of you i can't even like verbalize how much love in my heart there is i'm so grateful we are all ascending together thank you all so much have a good day guys bye bye
Are you ready to ascend to the next level? This is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide calling. Please be sure to keep all arms and legs inside your vessel at all times. I'm just here to remind you to take some time today. Support Rainbow's Rising podcast. Go join the Discord community. Check out the Patreon, get some stickers, custom tarot cards, check out the merch, the merch. You know you want to go connect with Rainbow Raja, maybe even get a session, who knows. Your support helps make this show possible, and she loves to support you. Help support her too. Once again, this is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide, guiding you to your ascension.